feminism is about fairness, the basic and fundamental human right of being able to participate in the choices for your future and that of your community. Education is our right, not just for the rich and white. Women having equal rights and who wants peace in every corner of the world. But what got us here? What led up to this point? In order to understand the contrasting outcomes of equal access to education between genders, but also a changed university culture that led to more sexual assaults around the country, we must look into Title IX's early days. Yes, Title IX is a federal law that prohibits sex discrimination in higher education um, at, at institutions that receive federal funds. Women's lives prior to Title IX were extremely limited. Without many opportunities for education, career choices were next to none. Some colleges wouldn't allow women to enroll, and if they did, only a small percentage would be admitted. I had four choices of things that I could be when I grew up. I could be a teacher, a nurse, a stewardess, or a secretary. Um, I couldn't go into to things that, that dealt with medicine. I couldn't go into law. I couldn't go into the real professions. Um, it, was, it was extremely limiting. And of course, the overall goal was to find a husband, um, get married, have children, and live with a white picket fence. With the men gone during war, women had gained a newfound level of independence during World War II. But it wouldn't be until the 70s when Title IX would officially be implemented. The 70s was a time like no other. From its renowned disco music to the Vietnam War and Watergate, many things emerged from this time period. But the impact of progressive movement proved to be a significant aspect of the time, more specifically, the big wave of women's rights movement. After many long years of hard work, Patsy Mink, along with many other female advocates, got Title IX passed in 1972. Known as the mother of Title IX, the act was renamed following her death in 2002 to the Patsy T. Mink Equal Opportunity in Education Act. Women's rights are about fundamental justice. Along with Patsy Mink, many other advocates from this time carry on a legacy till today. Some of these notable people include Billie Jean King, known for her partake in the Battle of the Sexes, a notable tennis match between her and Bobby Riggs, a famous tennis player of the time. Also, Birch Bay, known as the father of Title IX, is considered to be an influential senator of the time. He helped to create the legislation and actually pass it on to Congress. I think it shapes, Title IX shapes women's lives in numerous ways. So again, we see it in an educational standpoint. There are now a whole bunch of programs and scholarships encouraging women to join the STEM field, encouraging women to take back the business world, encouraging women to step into law degrees and doing things that, you know, haven't seemed or wasn't really a woman's career. Women are always tailored to either become a teacher, or to become a nurse, or to become a secretary, any things of those matter, but now we're giving women the opportunity to become doctors, to become anything that they want to be, rather than just limiting it to there. In addition to greatly increasing the number of students in numerous fields, like medicine and law, Title IX also assists with women in sports. <laughs> Title IX kind of contributes to that in a sense where women aren't discriminated against, women are set, it helps put women on the equal playing field as men and brings attention over back to women and helps to empower them. Without Title IX, many of the female athletes we look up to wouldn't be here. But a woman running a marathon was crazy. Officials tried to pull her off the course. 
A woman boxing was crazy. So if they want to call you crazy, fine. Show them what crazy can do. The sports brand Nike, along with many other companies, have been releasing campaigns featuring women in order to inspire females to partake in sports. Since 1972, when Title IX went into place, the number of women in sports has increased drastically, but in recent years, participation has slowed. Title IX has changed um, young girls' lives. Another way, again, is to just provide them with equality in the education education system and in sports. Like I said before, women in sports, it's not it's it's a joke to them. It's they're not really advertised. If you look at the women's NBA or WNBA, they don't get paid as much. If you look at the women's soccer who does so much better than the men's US soccer team, they don't get paid as much. Many people get confused and believe that Title IX only benefits females. This is simply incorrect. Title IX enforces the elimination of discrimination against any sex. In the past, women have been proven to be discriminated more in education, but anyone who is discriminated upon is protected by Title IX. And this leads into a big issue today, the number of sexual assaults from before Title IX to now. Reports of sexual assaults on campus too numerous to ignore, and yet so many cases remain unreported and unresolved. There's a divide between both genders in this circumstance. On one hand, the increase of shared time between men and women may have contributed to the increased sexual assaults on college campuses, especially in the 90s. Video surveillance cameras are everywhere, it seems, these days, and one USC college student is very grateful that they are. Based on that footage, he's been acquitted in a rape case that could have landed him in jail. On the other hand, false accusations of rape and sexual assault are coming out now in larger scales, which makes differing between guilty and innocent even more challenging. Title IX exists to prevent sex discrimination on campuses. So Title IX requires colleges and universities to act when a hostile environment exists for students on campus. And things like sexual assault and sexual harassment um, can create a hostile environment on campus. So that's where Title IX fits into the issue of sexual assault on campus. Now, FIRE is an organization that specifically advocates for students' free speech and due process rights. Many students accused of sexual assault, which majority aren't, are expelled without a trial. More and more people are reaching out for there to at least be a trial before a student is expelled due to sexual assault accusations. This era of women and men coming out is most notably considered the Me Too movement. Celebrities, students, workers, and many others feel as if they have a voice to come out now and speak against sexual assault and dis discrimination. Now for some statistics. Around 2.2 million less men will be attending college than women. This differs from the 70s where men greatly dominated the college scene, with about 58% making up the majority. However, the gender pay gap is still uneven. The average woman's salary is 78 to 82% of that of a man. In sports, women are severely underpaid compared to a man. For instance, two of the world's biggest soccer players make an unproportional salary. On one hand, one person makes around $300,000 a week. On the other hand, the other player makes about $4,900 a week. Which is the woman and which is the man? The gap between men and women is too large to ignore, but thanks to Title IX, it isn't as overlooked as it once was. Although the gender discrimination battle is not over, there have been major improvements from before Title IX to now. Voices are being spoken, and voices are also being heard. <laughs>